Matthew Hines. I'm a veteran. I'm a veteran of the 82nd Airborne. I took the oath, and I'm here to defend my state. Hey everyone, I'm Matthew Hines, and if you didn't know it yet, I'm running for the United States House of Representatives in Washington State's 1st Congressional District. Now today I'm going to take you down to the CHOP, or what is called the Seattle Autonomous Zone, or the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, etc., etc. Now before I take you down there, I want to point out a few things to you that you're not going to hear from the mainstream media. The first thing I want to point out to you is that this area is completely um, packed. I mean, you can't even park a car down there, and I'm going to just flash my uh, parking receipt there. It costs a lot of money just to even park down there if you can find a parking space. So my first question is, who are these people that are protesting? Because I go down there, I've been down there twice, and the majority of people I see are white young people. So where are they coming from? Hmm, well, let's just take a look. Okay, now that we see that the majority of people of white 18 to 20 year olds are probably coming from Seattle University, uh, there's something else I want to point out to you, and that is that this area has been occupied by, first of all, and this is not something I'm telling you, this is something that people there have told me. Down there you will find, of course, homeless people that have moved from the homeless camps around Seattle to a more advantageous spot at the occupied zone. The other people that are, have accumulated down there are people with mental illness, or drug addiction problems. So they have also uh, accumulated down there. Then of course you have uh, various groups that have accumulated down there and people are telling me that there are um, Antifa, they've had to throw Antifa out, that there are private uh, militia firms like Blackwater that are down there and while I was down there, what you're going to see is there is a drone that basically follows everybody. Now, when I went down there, I was lucky enough to have a gentleman by the name of Def Chef, and he took me around and he showed me a few things that I didn't know before. He explained things that were, that were going on, and between himself and other people I talked to, including reporters, I began to get a much bigger, more clear picture of what's going on there and in other cities in America. So I just want to tell you as we go along that this is a very eye-opening experience and you can say, oh, that's not true, it's not what they're saying on uh, NBC or Fox News, etc. But the bottom line is the people that you're looking at and listening to are all people. They all have rights, they all have needs, and they all have desires. Now when I went down there, what did I tell them? I told them that the big problem in our country is the lack of education. This is not about racism, it's about rich, it's about poor. And everybody agreed with me. In fact, they agreed with me so much that they asked me, Def actually asked me to interview him so we can talk about this stuff tomorrow, which I will do and I'll post as soon as I get this video up. So. I want you to really understand what's going on. I want you to understand the issues, and I want you to understand why a political candidate like myself, who basically can get nothing out of this, is down there trying to understand what is going on. Because this is a country where divided we stand, or I'm sorry, united we stand, or divided we fall. And I'm going to do everything I can until my last breath to make sure that we are united and not divided. And anybody who insists on dividing this country is going to have a problem with me. So let's take a look.
Hey everybody, I'm Matthew Hines, of course, your congressional candidate for the first district in Washington State, and I am standing here with a handsome young man. You can't really tell because he's got that rag on his face, but he's down here at the uh, CHOP, Seattle, or the Capitol Hill Occupation, what is uh, it? Uh, Capitol Hill Organized Protest. Yes, because I'm, I'm hung up on the Chaz thing. So Chaz is over. Chaz is over. So yeah. what's, what's going on now? Well, we're wanting people to disband the police, 50, at least 50%. We want people to fund black communities and white communities and all that, you know. And we want people to freaking just see that we're not terrorists. We're not fucking like terrorists. We're people who believe in this cause and we need people to realize that. Okay, so I just have to be the guy who asked the questions about the people are saying well there's no police so there's no law and order so people are getting killed and raped and assaulted have you seen any of that i've seen that but we stopped it oh did you okay oh, yeah so basically you're regulating yourselves we're regulating ourselves yes there's no leadership here okay great so how long have you actually been down here i've been down here about a week or two wow okay so yeah i was down here last week and none of this stuff was here so a lot of constru not a lot of construction is going on i'm just going to show this really quick let me see so all this stuff here has been done since last week so since the last time i was here so uh, what's going to happen when they come in to close it down we're in fight you're gonna fight so what can we like that's gonna be do you know when they're planning on doing it uh we don't know okay and what is okay so as a as a as a candidate let's get political here okay what is your opinion i mean for me this all is just symbolic of a failure of the leadership of seattle mm -hmm. is that correct that's correct and how are they failing us <clears throat> they're failing us because they're not one, meeting our demands, and they're not, two, freaking helping us out. I mean, there's people from China that are freaking supporting us. There's people all over the world that are supporting us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for the people that are watching this saying, what about all these people who own businesses that are now out of business? What, what do you have to say about that? I have to say I'm very sorry, but it's for a better cause. Okay. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna ask you, it, and we're talking to Mr. X because he doesn't want to, of course, identify himself, but I asked him the question, why don't you guys go over to Bill Gates's house and, and protest there? He's responsible for the coronavirus, supposedly, responsible for the lockdown. He's got Jay Inslee under his thumb. Jay Inslee's daughter works for the, um, the Gates Foundation, and you guys are here. So is there any chance you guys are going to, you know, bring Gates into this and this whole coronavirus mess? I don't know. You don't know? Okay. I don't know, but I think we should. Well, if I, I, I was going to bring maps, I was going to bring maps to Bill Gates' house, but oh, I forgot really? to do it. I was, I was going to pass them out, but I thought, ah, I'm just going to come down here and do my thing and go and not try to cause any problems. You, but, you uh, should go get those maps. I'll post, his, I'll post a map on this video on YouTube. All right, all right. So, all right, well, this is Mr. X, Matthew Hines, running for Congress down at the CHOP. And what is it? Capitol Hill? Capitol Hill Organized Protest. Organized Protest, and this is organized. All right, well, thank you, Mr. X. Oh, thank you. Let's Hines. do this, and then let's do a fist bump and Black Lives Matter, right? Black Lives Matter. All right, thank you, Mr. X. Yeah, you're welcome. He took a bucket. He took a bucket. He took a bucket. You know he took a bucket from the, you know from, hurt, you from, the, from the people. Take him out to Linwood. Drop him off at the park, man. He'll be all right. <laughs> so what's going on here? Um, a lot. I mean, it our, depends. It depends on who you. you it, what, it depends on who you talk to. Well, I w like. What's what's the problem here with these people? I mean, what's the problem? Well, it's your protest. What's the problem with them? Your protest? Yeah. What does that mean? 
Well, it means that this is about what's happening to black communities, right? I don't know, bro. Do you guys mind if I record? I don't care if you record okay. me. Let me around electricity and, and the lights at Cal, at Cal Anderson Park. So for, for, for this to actually go down like this and the city ends up leaving, it doesn't really do anything. Seems like they should have just negotiated it yesterday or the day before. Well, I agree with you there, O. Oh, and again, I mean, we are seeing some incremental things happen yeah, at all of the time. I think that that's what all of us are, you know, watching. We're watching every incremental decision unfold, and, and there it has either consequences, maybe good or bad, for either party. And so what we're seeing now is it looks like the city could have done a different measure. I mean, clearly the protest. Where's, where's Chief Scott? Is He's the guy who's actually been out here. And so ultimately, finally, you know, Chief Scott, is like maybe he got a phone call from City Hall or something. Then Chief Scoggin goes into, you know, the discussion. But they brought somebody from the mayor's office who nobody's ever seen before. And this is what I'm telling you about carrying a lot of weight and no baggage. If you're coming to negotiate, you got to get the people with the baggage out of the way. Because so much of the conversation now went all to the political side. You see what I'm saying? When this was an operational uh, uh, a discussion, a negotiation that was supposed to happen here, I don't know if for City Hall is about optics. I don't know if having this black man, this fire chief, who's actually walked these streets and gains people's trust. I don't know if they don't want him out there. No, they don't, they don't want him out there. to run this way. But it seems to me all the success that Chief Scott has had out here in dealing with these protesters for today to be the biggest day that the city has taken action here to try to sideline him is crazy. Absolutely, and I think that they could really learn a lesson from independent media and the streamers that have been out here on the streets literally showing Chief Scoggins doing his walks, talking to people, embracing people, building relationships. We talk about this a lot. We talk about the fact that what is one of the broken things in the system is the relational piece. When Chief Scoggins is out here building relationships, you should actually lean on him to in his understanding of those relationships. It's violence here.
Tell the mayor, we want this shit done, we want you guys gone. Bye. We don't want to go shit, we got to get a shake with shit, we not talking about shit. Listen, for a fucking month straight. There is still no police presence here, and some neighbors say they fear more violence as the chop heads into its third weekend in Seattle. I just want to know how this guy knows to be here when it looks like the police are moving in. My name is Matthew Hines. I'm a veteran. I'm a veteran of the 82nd Airborne. I took the oath and I'm here to defend my state. Congressman Susan Del Bendy has been in office since 2012, using her substantial financial resources thanks to Microsoft and her $84 million fortune, she has been able to continually maintain an office where people still have little idea what she's done. Well, she's learned to dance around and she's learned to do all the political maneuvers you have to do to keep getting reelected. Well, Susan Del Bendy, it's time for you to go.